thank you for saving me. Church, say amen. Amen. The psalmist at one time said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, preacher. And if there's anybody that says anything here on the earth created by God, blessed by God, governed by God, protected by God, empowered by God, it ought to be his people that say something. Amen. I don't preach a starchy gospel. I preach a living gospel. I don't preach a dead word. Yes, sir. I preach a living word. Come on. And the last time I checked Jesus as he was being brought up for trial, mm -hmm. the people said, let your people be quiet. Mm -hmm. He said, if I tell them to be quiet, yes, the rocks will yeah. scream out. Hosanna, yeah. Hosanna. Yes, so I'm just looking for a few folk Amen. who will agree with God's word yeah. and err now and then yeah. say amen. 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 Uh, that's a minute and 38 seconds. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. I am just so glad to be before you. Brother Rupert and his staff have done a magnificent job Amen. to put together, I think, a very magnificent and great lectureship. And I look forward to more that is coming. I know there are two pillars, two giants in the gospel coming behind me. I, and I'm going to do my best just to get on base. Amen. Come on, sir. Uh, what's left of my voice. Uh, I'm going to use it to the fullest. Amen. Yes, sir. I was at a gospel meeting in Staten Island, and my boo boo kid <laughs> told me to kick in the front door. And I tried my best to kick in the front door. Uh -huh. Boo boo kitty, will you please stand up? Just let folks see you. Amen. Amen. All right, sit back down. We don't want to cause any problems. I'm glad to also have uh, members of the 13th Street Church of Christ in the audience. Of course, my battle buddy, Brother Ty Johnson, is here. Yes, sir. Uh, we are Batman and Robin, uh, and some days we switch, so you never know which one's Robin and which one's Batman. Uh, Amen, somebody. Uh, and I'm also super glad to have my mother and my auntie here with me. Uh, I drove her from Trenton, New Jersey, just so she could make it. Amen. And I'm going to take her back. Yes, sir. That's three minutes and three seconds. <laughs> Amen, somebody. And I believe upon the reading of the scripture, the official clock will take off. Uh, uh, the Bible says in John <laughs> chapter 5 and verse 39. John 5 and verse 39. The Bible reads, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can ye believe which ye receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Right. The assigned subject caught in the chaos and can't see Christ. Whoa. Caught in the chaos, in the chaos yes. and can't see Christ. On, we are living in a time where this world we consider home is just one more step away from utter complete chaos. The word chaos itself means to have complete disorder and confusion. It is strengthened by the fact that it is a state of mind in which behavior and events are not controlled by anything. For some of us, we may know somebody, we may know a bookie in them, or it might even be us yeah. whose house is in chaos. Yeah. Some of us are living in a house, a home full of chaos. Uh -huh. Love doesn't live there anymore. Uh -huh. Drama 
has sat down on the couch in the living room. It's there for an extended stay. Emptiness and loneliness have filled the hallways with pain and resentment and anger have evicted joy and peace. For some of us, chaos might be financial chaos. There's more bills than a little bit. Rent is high, but your check is low. Lights are on by hope and a prayer, and your prayer and hope might have just run out. Some of us might be living in a moral chaos, where you find you're walking right at one time, but now you're riding dirty with the wrong foot. You've been a light for Jesus at one time, but now you're lit for the devil. Your lifestyle's on fleet for the wrong operation. There might be some of us who are in spiritual chaos. And when I say spiritual chaos, I mean you are vividly, actively choosing to do wrong because you know better. Some of us sitting in the seat right now know we ought to do better, but don't do better because we like the taste of an old lifestyle. We just won't let it go. Some of us have been blinded, blunted, and concussed by the devil's ways, and we don't realize that God is trying to rescue us, but we keep going back to a chaotic lifestyle. Houses tore up from the floor. Families getting broken up. Husband done left your wife done left you. Your bank account's broke. Your job's going under. There's nothing but chaos. Yes, but I know somebody yes, who is a chaos stop. Come on, he is the one who is able to turn things that are upside down and make them right. Yes, no matter how hard the devil tries, uh -huh. the devil will try his best to blunt us from understanding or even seeing the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Paul at one time said the God of this world yeah. has blinded the minds of men which they believe not. I stopped by here to tell you just a little bit about what the devil does to get you blind. He'll blind you with false prophets, false doctrine, fake love, and fraudulent faith. He'll blind you with devilish denominations, prosperity preachers, egocentric elders and dishonest deacons. He'll oblige you to read into it what you want religion. He'll have clueless and corrupt change agents, moronic, misguided, mudslinging members, and he'll also have unlearned, unethical, and un unsick preachers calling themselves to be preachers of the gospel. We are living in a world where folk don't understand that without Christ, there will be chaos. Without Christ, you're going to have trouble. Without Christ, there's going to be persecution. Without Christ, there's going to be suffering. Without Christ, you won't be able to walk right. Without Christ, you won't be able to talk right. Without Christ, there will be no hold on. Without Christ, there will be no bring your whole trouble on. Without Christ, you'll not be able to look toward the hills from which coming no help. Without Christ, your will will be heavy. Without Christ, your burden will not be light. Without Christ, there'll be no way. There'll be no truth. There'll be no light. Why? Because without Christ, Come on, you have nothing. Come on. When you can't see Christ, you have no hope for the hopeless. There's no blessing for your brokenness. There's no joy for your journey. There's no peace for your problem. When you're caught up in the chaos and can't see Christ. There's no victory in your war. Your storms get bigger every moment, but there's no solution to help you. I stopped by here to tell you that the answer to your chaos is Jesus the Christ. Yes, sir. I need a witness right now. Somebody who's able to declare that God's been good to me. Yes, sir. I don't need a fake, phony, fraudulent Christian. I need somebody to say, when God was with me, God worked it out.
God proving it out. Text here in John chapter 5. And all John is trying to get you to do is believe in the Christ. Because if you can believe in the Christ, you'll make it through your chaos. The last time I checked, when there was chaos and Christ showed up, chaos lost because the power of Christ was too strong. Yeah. I just need a yeah. witness every now and then. Yeah. Somebody who are able to empathize or sympathize with Lazarus. Lazarus was dead in his grave, but because Jesus called his name, he got up. Yes, Somebody had their name called by the Lord this morning yeah. and he got up. John chapter 5, just quickly, not trying to step on nobody toes, I'm just trying to set the scene for my verse or two. Is that all right? In John 5, 1 through 17, Jesus helps them to see he can do the impossible. Where a man who's ill for 38 years, Jesus comes and heals him on the Sabbath, and then you find your church folk. Some folk who get upset because you got something good done for you. Come on. Yeah, crash in the barrel no matter where you go. I don't care if you're in the street, you in the hood, you at the movies, or in the church house. Somebody gonna be a hater because God bless you. And that's what just happened in John 5, 1 through 17. They're so mad that Jesus worked on the Sabbath, they had no joy that Jesus healed a man that was sick for 38 years. Baby, if God heals me, I'm going to be happy about it. And I'm going to be worried about if it's the Sabbath or not because God's power worked in my chaos. In John 5 18, he stops when he deals with the Jews. And what he deals with the Jews was to illuminate to them that not only was God his father, but he was equal in authority with God. And if you got a problem with it, he called on witnesses to let them know you meet your witnesses told you I was coming. Part of our problem right now is when the Bible witnesses to us about the power of Christ, we'd rather look at everybody else other than Jesus. And I gotta tell you this little something right now. Ain't nobody. Yes, Nobody. Nobody. Like Jesus. Yes, Look who else can walk on water. Yes. And tell me, man, get up out the boat if you want. Come on. I feel constrained up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I got preachers to the left and the right of me. Take me to the back of me. I feel like I can't move. Uh -huh. But I thought about Peter. Uh -huh. When he looked out at Jesus and Jesus said, come. come. Peter stuck out a foot. Y'all ain't on out with me yet. <laughs> Stuck his metal, his meaty bone foot in some high quality H2O. Saw that it didn't drop. Lift up the other foot. Come on, sir. Brought that foot out the boat. Uh -huh. Saw he was on some high quality H2O. But it gave him power like concrete. Ain't God good? To help you walk over your trouble. But you gotta believe God is able. The problem in the text. They kept reading the word, but miss who was right in front of them. Church folk, if you're listening to me right now, don't just read God's word. Look at who's in front of you. Because when you have your walk on water moment, everybody is going to have a walk on water moment. You're going to start running with God, but then one time you're going to look around, baby. You'll get distracted by what's on the left and what's on the right and lose focus of looking under Jesus. Y'all yeah. right right now? Yeah. Because that answer to our chaos is to remember who Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. I got 10 minutes left. Oh. Let me see if I can actually get to my topic. <laughs> In John 5, 39. The text of scripture says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they, yeah, they, are they. that test me. Yes, sir. Are y'all here? I need you to notice something here. Scholars are in linguistic combat as to whether or not 
this is just a statement or a command. Well, since I'm not scholarly, I'm just a poor boy from Trenton, New Jersey. Come on now. I'm going to walk down the middle of the aisle because I can see the commandment yes, sir. as well as the statement. Yeah, yeah. The statement is search the scripture. Uh -huh. The commandment is search the scripture. Uh -huh. Here's our problem. Chaos comes. Oh, Lord, help me somebody. Come on, preacher. Because we don't, we don't search the scripture. the scripture. Come on, Doc. You see, had they paid attention uh -huh. while they were going to their bar mitzvah, yeah. reading of the score uh -huh. of the Lord in the synagogue, yeah. they would have read Isaiah 61, uh -huh. which their same messianic Savior did yeah. in Luke chapter 4, but then turned around and said, this day, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? In other words, I'm the one you've been looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine John being in jail? Had the audacity to send disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one that we should look for? Come on along with me, somebody. Let's take a walk for a second. How much proof do you need? <laughs> do you need yeah. to realize Jesus is the Son of the Living God yeah. and His power is unmatchable? Yeah. You go tell John the death here. Yeah. Let me park my car here for a second. Because right. there's somebody, if they're willing to be honest with themselves, at one time you heard God. But you act like you ain't here. And it might be somebody here right now uh -huh. who heard God, but act like he didn't hear. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, let me walk a little bit because y'all looking at me funny. Uh -huh. Paul told Titus. Yes, he did. In Titus chapter 1 uh -huh. and verse 5. Come on, Doc. He says, For I have left you yes, sir. in Crete uh -huh. to say things in order yes, sir. that are wanted. Uh -huh. Are y'all allowing me? And to ordain elders in every city. Yeah. Are y'all here with me? Some folk have lost their mind in underestimating the authority of the preacher. Come on, sir. You heard what the book said, yes, sir. but are you reading it and hearing what God said? The preacher has the responsibility of putting a broken bone back together. Come close, come close. The church in its inception in Acts chapter 2 was perfectly fine, but it did not go bad until the creeps went back to their old ways with breaking what they were looking like. Come close, come close. Since they broke what their look was supposed to look like, Paul left Titus there to put them back together. Uh -huh. And that's the role of the preacher. As long as the church is here on earth, the role of the preacher is to keep the church put together. And the elder's role is to be the band-aid that holds you together. Come on. Oh, preach, brother. See, <laughs> <laughs> when you search the scriptures, the Jews' problem in this text, they were exegeting instead of exegeting. Yeah, yeah. Isogesis is when you make the text say something, it has no business saying it. Uh -huh. Exegesis is when you unearth, dig up what God's word is saying through the intent of the author and the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So Jesus looks at him. Uh -huh. He says, search the scriptures. Yeah. Jesus was not questioning their ability to know what the scripture said. Uh -huh. Jesus was questioning their heart Amen. behind what they were reading. Y'all yeah. right? Because yeah. some of us can quote scripture. Yeah. Amen. Some of us will be on time on Sunday morning. Uh -huh. And as, as I say at 13th Street, yeah, yeah. Come on, preacher. it's about to get turbulent. Yeah. Yeah. Because just because uh -huh. you can quote scripture, yes, sir. Just because uh -huh. you show up for ministry, yes, sir. Just, because just because you are there when they need a helping hand, yeah. if your heart is not right, yes, sir. you are a creator of chaos. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. The 
church is designed uh-huh. to make people first day for Christ. Yeah. 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 This is why Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, uh-huh. you are the salt of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. And last time I checked, uh-huh. when you have too much salt, you get thirsty. Yeah. Whose life are you making thirsty for Christ Jesus? Wow. Oh, come close, come, come close. On now. Come on, because if your life is ungodly, it's unrighteous and dirty, but you call yourself a student of scripture, you are creating chaos in the world we're living in. Come on, God. Wow. You are adding confusion to a confused folk that Jesus came to say. I ain't gonna finish this lesson and I ain't mad at nobody. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, failure to see Christ allows chaos to come into existence. Yes. Failure to see Christ prevents proper fellowship with God. Yes. It prohibits true reconciliation, it sponsors forgiveness, and it even eliminates the opportunity to go to heaven. When the believers can't see Christ, yeah. then what can we expect the world to do? Yeah. Church of Christ, we got work to do. Yeah. We've been silent and quiet, sitting in our buildings for too long. Yeah. I'm going to paint for you a picture and I'm going to take my seat. Because when you think about Jesus, yes. while sin was running rapid on earth, uh-huh. let go. Put on flesh like a man. Which means he left the church. And came to the people. He left heaven. And came to the people. He came and sat with sinners. Ate with publicans. Talked to prostitutes. Probably dealt with pimps. He even had to deal with men who were moving women. And was jealous they slept with somebody else. Because how else can you catch somebody in adultery? If you ain't been watching her. I'm talking to the church right now. Because Jesus is not talking to the sinner man. He's talking to church folk. He said, you're searching the scripture, but you won't even come to me. You can't recognize me because you want the, the praise of men. Come close as I get ready to take my seat. There are too many folk who want to get behind God's sacred desk and want the praise of men. Rather than the praise of God. Come on, God. This is not no play type. Yes, People's lives are in state. Yes, and when we preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus yes, Christ, sir. Yes, sir. we provide the answer uh-huh. to the chaos. Yes, sir. I'm glad yeah. to be a child of God. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. he called me to be a gospel preacher. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. I'm a paramedic on the side of a road where souls are dying. Yes, I'm glad, glad, glad to be a nurse in the emergency room uh-huh. and I can bring somebody to the doctor. Yes, Can't yes. you hear the doctor say, come unto me. Oh, All ye that labor yes. and are heavy labor. Uh-huh. Let, me, let me exegete the text just a little bit. Uh-huh. That idea of heavy labor has the meaning that you're going through some burdens that you are physically and mentally unable to handle on your own. So Jesus says, come unto me. It's an action word. It means you got to get up out your misery. You got to get up out your pain. You got to get up out your sorrow. You got to get up out your hurt and come to Jesus. Well, how will people come to Jesus? If the church is the light, they'll see Christ and they can only see Christ in the chaos. When the church walks right. Amen. And as I take my seat, I ain't mad at nobody. I love everybody. But we have a book called the B I B L E. There's no need to fake it till we make it. Because the instructions are clear. Search the scripture. Hello, I'm Christopher Bradley, the 13th Street Church of Christ, the senior minister. And I'm coming to ask a question, how can the church help 
this chaotic world out of its chaos. One of the greatest ways we can help this world out of its chaos is for the church to be who we are called to be. We're called to be loving, we're called to be compassionate, we're called to be generous, we're called to be peacemakers. And the greatest way to do this is to make peace in this world by putting our hands on other people's hands and showing God's love through our work. May God bless you real good. You've been watching the 15th annual Mid-Atlantic Lectureship on Blackwell's Bench. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, don't forget to comment and share the video. See you later.